after having sustained a concussion. The risk of a subsequent lower extremity injury in the period after return to play is increased. It is not fully understood why, but it is thought that an inefficient integration of brain networks may relate to this increased risk. Good neuromuscular control is primordial in exercise. Dysfunction, which may arise from problems with attention, orientation, awareness, etc., is believed to be one of the most important contributors to this increased injury risk. The majority of research focused on aerobic exercise, thereby leaving the neuromuscular aspects of rehabilitation in the cold. The pilot study by Howell and colleagues in 2022 showed promising results for the integration of neuromuscular training into rehabilitation after concussion. In this video, we will take a deeper look into the aspects of this neuromuscular training. Check out our online courses now. The link is in the video description. Results from this randomized controlled pilot study indicate that neuromuscular training after concussion in adolescents lowered the subsequent musculoskeletal lower extremity injury risk. Players who followed the standard of care instructions were three and a half times more likely to get injured than players who participated in the neuromuscular rehabilitation program. Within the first 90 days post-concussion, none of the individuals from the neuromuscular rehabilitation group got injured, while half of the people from the standard of care group did. Notwithstanding the fact that these results should be regarded as preliminary due to the pilot nature, it can be of value to implement some of those findings into practice. Let us take a deeper look. The neuromuscular training included plyometric strength technique and balance training and also focused on performing dual tasks. These dual tasks progressed throughout the course of the rehabilitation based on the subject's understanding and their ability to successfully complete each exercise with minimal correction. Both cognitive and motor tasks were performed simultaneously. Motor tasks progressed from standing to walking to hopping and catching. The cognitive tasks could progress from, for example, animal naming, telling digits backwards and immediate memory recall. Sessions were held twice per week for eight weeks and were supervised. Next, we will present some of the aspects of this neuromuscular training program. Neuromuscular training program also involves cognitive challenges such as balance exercises combined with saying the alphabet out loud backwards or counting down from 100 in steps of 3. We will link a video in the top right corner for a couple of ideas. What should we now learn from these results? We already know that progressive aerobic exercise helps safely speed recovery, as we discussed in an earlier video which you can watch by clicking on the link in the top right corner. But completing a neuromuscular training program twice a week for eight weeks, thereby investing approximately 40 minutes per week, is a promising strategy to reduce the risk of sustaining a musculoskeletal injury to the lower extremities after a concussion. In this video, we took a closer look to neuromuscular training in concussed players and how to implement it in practice. If you liked it, be sure to give us a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. As always, this was Ellen for Physiotutors. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video. So, bye.